Jordy and Zoolander take one action. Very good. All right, cool. Because you wouldn't believe how long it takes some people. <laughs> okay, here we are. All right, here we are. Let me just... Uh, yo, what do they call me? They call me Devin Zoolander. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Yeah, they call me Devin Zoolander. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. <laughs> and I look good on camera. Okay, you know I look good on camera. There you go. Oh, real quick for your sound effect. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll, I'll let you know in enough time for you to do it real quick. And, you know, just real quick. Zoolander, no one above. Cause I'm on the mic with Jordy Love. All right. Zoolander, and... no one above. Cause I'm on the mic with Jordy Love. All right, that's enough, brother. All right. Just just you know, every once in a while we're gonna press that. And just to let you know, I'm gonna let you press the buttons too. But let's get started real quick. Elementary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, let's fade this real quick. Let's fade this. That was a good intro right there. Nice intro, nice intro. Okay, but that's not really the official intro. That was just the musical intro. Oh. Now we gotta, you know, we gotta do a little bit more. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just like the way the cards work. So let's, let's, let's just keep going a little bit. No, that's not the right beat. It's not the right beat. Oh, we'll try this one. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. For real. Okay. Here we go. Mic check one, two, one, two. Yo, what's up? All right, all right, we're cool. Okay, here we go, right here. Um, yo, what's up? It's your homie, Devin Zoolander, coming all the way live from Studio Nine. And today is a special honor because I have with me a woman who is talented, a woman who is driven, ambitious, a woman who is a boss and is boss made, has boss in her DNA, and will continue to be a boss and elevate other bosses for the rest of her life. The woman to my right, yeah, 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 I, I feel you. The woman to my right is so dope that I have to go ahead and read a little bit. She is just a girl boss trying to level up and helping other bosses do the same. The CEO of Blinging, Blingin' Luxury. I don't know why I, I, something wrong with me. I can't read. The CEO of Blingin' Luxury, Blingin' Beauty Bar, and Boss Me. Yep. She started her first business at the wise age of 18 years old. So she knows what she's doing. Yes. Without further ado, please put your hands together for the one, the only, Jordy Love. Thank you. <laughs> all right. All right. Yes. And the people, they thank you. Thanks. All right. So just how are you today? I am doing great. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's really good to hear. I'm glad you're doing great. Just to give you a quick tutorial right here, you know, the buttons, which I want to give you the option to press if you feel so inclined throughout the course of conversation. Yeah. So if someone says something and you feel like, you know what, that was really, really funny, you would press the orange button. Okay. He's killing me. <laughs> wow. All right. That's enough. All right. Now, if someone is in your DMs and they just have the wrong kind of energy, please press. Actually, no, no, that's not a good one. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Please press the green button. Okay. Okay. And uh, if someone says something that is funny, but it really doesn't deserve all of that laughter, mm -hmm. hit the sky blue button or the light blue button. Okay. All right. <laughs> then if, you know what, you notice like when you leave here, there's just some like weird energy. It's just like you make a turn. The car behind you makes a turn. Make another turn. The car oh. still. So basically you're being followed. You need to press the dark blue button. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. And if, you know, sometimes people, when they're trying to start a business and they're trying to like maybe get a, a consultation, get a phone call with mm -hmm. you so that you can, you know, establish that initial rapport with them, they just might, it, it just doesn't feel natural. It feels like they're forcing it. It feels mm -hmm. like they're trying to make something work. Please press the purple button. Okay. Stop trying to make fetch work. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what that is right there. And then, you know, for um 
for all of us that, you know, think that we're beautiful, because I personally call myself the dark skinned pretty boy. Nobody else else does that. But it's important for me because growing up, only the light skinned people were viewed as beautiful. But I was like, hold on now. I've got it too. So exactly. Uh get your mirror ready. Okay. I'll press the pink button and work the camera. Okay. Damn, all right, cool. All right, let's put that down. And then lastly, whenever we want to let people know whose show this is. Zoolander, no one above. Cause I'm on the mic with Jordy Love. Zoolander, no one above. Cause I'm on the mic with Jordy Love. All right, now that we got that figured out, we can keep it moving. Okay. So first, I would like to start by I, w- I want to talk about something that you shared on your stories where you pose the question to all of your followers, can money buy you happiness? So what I would like for you to do right now is to talk about what was the inspiration for you making that post and what did you learn (laughs) about yourself and others, the way they view money and happiness? Um, Honestly, I made the post, I was just sitting there bored. I just like, sometimes I just have like random topics in my head that I just like, I would just go in my group chat or something and just like ask, oh, what y'all think or what y'all think about this? And then yesterday it just hit the internet. So um, that's how I basically got it. Um, Can money buy happiness? Um, I had like a 50-50 rate with that. I had um, some people say yes, some people said no. Um, And my questions was for them, like um, if money can buy you happiness, uh, are you okay with people treating you wrong as long as they buy you things? And I didn't get a response after that. And then um, another person said, money can't buy happiness. And I said, are you okay with um, being with somebody that is, uh, what, what did I say? Are you okay with being with somebody that doesn't have as much money? And she said, um, what did she say? She said something like, as long as they can like carry their weight or something. Hmm. Well, let me see. Let me let me go back real quick. Let me. Let yeah, me see what it we... was something like that. I'm hmm. like, hold on. Let let's me... go. Let's go back in time. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. What we Cause got. I had a lot. Yeah, you had. Okay. Let's. Of people commenting about this. Okay. Not not happiness, but for sure, peace of mind to an extent. Yes, and it does. Somebody else said only for a certain amount of time. So I say no. I agree with them. Um. Somebody else said, no, family and freedom is happiness. A lot of people, I'm getting a lot of yeses from females that are around my age group. Okay, okay. (laughs) And I say that, but I get a lot of no's from females that are around my age group. Mm -hmm. And I also have like a lot of guys commenting no and yes. So it's a good mixture. Yeah. Well, that, that that's really interesting to me just because I think that we know that money, you know, makes the world go round. Mm-hmm. We need it to survive. We need mm-hmm. it to do the things that we want to do. But I think you had an explanation about as far as it might not buy you happiness directly, but it can buy you things or help you gain experiences or take vacations to places that can make you feel happy. Yeah. So, so yeah, I don't know. I, I guess the reason why I brought it up is just because I, I think that that's a really good point because getting back to, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk um, specifically about how you got your start okay. as, a, as a serial entrepreneur, but I think that I want you to educate people on the importance of money and what you do because obviously it means something but how you also have other values that are that also are at play. So it's right. not just the money. So tell me about why did you start your first business? Um, so my first business was Bling Luxury, which is a um, hair company. So I started for money. Right. OK, <laughs> right, that's cool. That's cool. I was I was uh, up at school. Um, my freshman year of college and I was uh, I couldn't find a job. So my last resort was working on college campus and they put me in the um, cafeteria. So I was serving food. And then some days I'd be in the back washing dishes. I'm like, no, I don't want to do this. (laughs) This is like, no, I don't. So I'm like, um, 
let me try to sell here. So at the time, my older sister that lives in Atlanta, her mom was selling here at the same time. So she would like help me with like resources and vendors and stuff like that. And that's basically how I got started. But um, yeah. yeah, I started, I started from the sense of extra money. I didn't, I'd never been passionate about nothing. I'd never been consistent with anything like ever. So, I mean, me starting, I really didn't expect it to get this far. Like it's almost my third year next month. So I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, I um, I thought it was going to be like a, you know, like a here and there type of thing. Yeah. And, uh, but I actually stuck with it. So now it's for me, it's not just about the money. It's about um, inspiring people to, if they want to go for something and they're serious about doing something, just go for it. So to me, it's not just about money. It's about inspiring people. It's inspiring people. It's about educating other people, um, mostly females, mm -hmm. um, young females, mm -hmm. um, that's that's what I want to do. I want to inspire, motivate, um, basically tell people that you could start a business. As long as you're successful, you don't have to be popular. You don't have to have a lot of money to start. If you have a plan, a goal, and the right mindset for it, you can do it. Right. Because yeah. you're someone that didn't necessarily have that that further down the line, you didn't have like a 10 year plan or anything. No. You were just trying to make some money while you were in college. Right. This is right off the limb. This is like yeah. sitting in my dorm room. I didn't have no roommate. I'm just by myself. I'm like, all right, let me see what I can do. Right. So I'm just like, boom, let me just sell here. Yeah. And then I took it from there. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that I'm, I'm glad you told that story because I really want people to understand that money obviously is the goal but i feel like for me the larger goal is to do whatever i have to do to create the quality of life that i want exactly yeah that's 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 like i wouldn't say like one of my my only goal but that's definitely one of my main goals like i'm definitely working towards the lifestyle that i want to live like the lifestyle i have put in my head that's like when i wake up and think about what I go to sleep and I dream about is just my lifestyle that I just need to have. Like, right, right. Now, now speaking of that lifestyle, we're going to jump around a little bit, but speaking of that lifestyle, mm -hmm. because you have a sister that is still in Atlanta? Yeah, she oh, okay. she's in Atlanta, yeah. Okay, she's in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to ask you, while you love your city, while you love Pittsburgh and you love everything that you've gotten from this city, mm -hmm. I have to ask for that lifestyle, that, that dream lifestyle that you are working towards, that you will realize at sooner than you think, mm -hmm. is does that exist in Pittsburgh or does that exist somewhere else? Um, I actually struggle with this. Like, I would say daily because I'm like, I really think about like my future very often. So like one minute I'm like, I'm going to just stay in Pittsburgh and show people that it doesn't matter where you live at. You could, as long as you put in the work, you could get to where you're going. Like I tell myself, there's people in Kentucky, Kansas, like there's people in these cities that aren't big, like LA and Atlanta that are making millions of dollars with their businesses and things like that. And they just stayed down until they came up. So I struggle with, you know, do I want to move or do I want to stay? So that's like, it's hard for me to answer right now because I'm still thinking about it because one minute I'm just ready to get up and go. Like yeah. I'll think about, you know, um, in Atlanta, there's people that live this luxury lifestyle that I want to, you know, have something similar to. And then in Pittsburgh, I don't really see anybody that's in my field that lives a lifestyle that I want to live, you know, like not saying that they live better or anything like that. I'm just saying like, there's a lot of people in Atlanta that have hair businesses that are like famous. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's just like, uh, this city is like, you know, like a box yes. and then everybody's yeah. in a box. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, do I want to stay here and just really put in the work to like grow and just be here with my family and show people that you can still be successful in Pittsburgh or do I want to do what everybody else does and move out of town? Right. Or an another option could be 
where you maybe you spend the majority of your time mm -hmm. in Atlanta or wherever you decide to live, but you still have a property in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. so that when, you know, and you could rent it out as an Airbnb or something mm -hmm. while you're not there. And you can always, because you're always going to come back. You're always exactly. going to be here. Your family, your roots mm -hmm. are here. But I think being able to uh, open up to the idea, hey, I could possibly just like have two places and two residences. Right. You know? That, that, I think about it all the time. Yeah. So. Thank you very much for just being willing to talk about that because I think people need to know about where you're at as far as uh, like where you see, well, let me turn this down a little bit. Like where people see your your business going mm -hmm. and where you see yourself because it might be in Pittsburgh, it might not be. Yeah, you never know. Right, you never know. Now, to move it along, there is Blinging Beauty Bar. Yeah. Okay. That's like sad, sad, sad. Sad, sad, sad. Yeah, that was like, um, what was it? I want to say last summer back in July. I had got certified to do uh, microblading eyebrows, which is like mm -hmm. tattoo eyebrows. Mm -hmm. But I don't do it anymore. It was like too much. So like, that's like to the side. That's to the side. Yeah. Then I had got um, certified to do teeth whitening and yeah. stuff like that. And I still do that, but not as much as I did before. Okay. So that's like... That's the side. Yeah, that's the side. Okay, okay. That's, that's cool. not like the main concern. Right, right, right. Yeah. I got it. I got it. It's just an additional skill that you yeah. have. Yeah. Right. All right. That's that's fair. All right. Let's talk about Boss Me. When I was looking at that page, I saw that you do a lot of different things. There, There is coaching. There is merch. There are events. There's a book. There's a lot of things that you have going on with Boss yeah. Me. So tell me about uh, why you started it and what kind of services you provide. Um. So Boss Me, I just actually dropped that... Uh, business in uh january 3rd i just introduced the business everywhere so um i basically started it because i have a lot of people ask me well how'd you start or where did you go for this or what apps do you use for this or how did you grow your business and just basically like you know business questions and i'm just like you know i don't mind giving out advice but i had to pay for it so y'all gonna pay for it too right so um uh, i do business coaching on air I give out business tips and then my business coaching goes into business classes. I had came up with this uh, group class called Turn Your Boss Mode Up. And it's basically where it's um, a beginner's class on how to start a business the right way. Um, I tell people the difference between a business and a hobby. And if you want to, you know, be a business business, you got to go get legit. You got to have your paperwork. So that way, um, you're legal, like you're a legal business. I tell people how to um, market for their company. Uh, I show people how to um, grow their audience if they feel like slow sometimes. Uh, I tell people the difference between a good logo and a bad logo, just uh, different stuff that ties in with uh, growing a business successfully. And um, then the bulk is basically my journey on how I started my business and then I go through, uh, you know, the same thing, marketing tips, uh, how to get legal and stuff like that. So that's basically what's in my book. And then merch is just, I call it a uh, streetwear for entrepreneurs. So mm -hmm. little t-shirts, jackets mm -hmm. that, you know, you could wear on a daily hats that you could run to the post office with the store, you know, just boss mate where boss is boss up. You're already boss, but we got to take it to another level and boss up some more. Right, so, right, yeah. right. I get that. Now, I have to ask, uh, now I know that this is something that people will have to pay for, so I don't want you to give all of your and knowledge I'll get, I'll away. I'll give my tips. I'll but but tips. I would like to know, since you brought up the mm -hmm. difference between a good logo and a bad logo, just gives us give us kind of like a snapshot of what you tell your clients that are like, why is this logo good and why is this one bad? Yeah, okay, so basically this is all like, it's not facts. It's opinion based off what I learned and my experience with me starting off having a bad logo and then turning it over to a much better logo. So when I first started, my the back of my logo wasn't transparent. So mm -hmm. every time I would put something on my logo on something, it'll have that black sticker in the back. Right. Uh, I had like um, sparkles and stuff all over my uh, logo when I first started and stuff like that. And um, now I just have something simpler. 
-hmm. people don't think people think that doing too much is going to make them stand out but in reality being simple is better so um i say like text-based logos you know little icons those logos that are like uh it, de it depends on what your business is for. If it's for like a YouTube channel, a podcast, I don't feel like this would be a bad logo. But if it's for like hair and you have like an animated person and they're holding up bundles and stuff, I don't feel like that's a good logo. It's doing too much and yeah, it's just too much. And, and to build on what you're saying, because you're the expert, I'm learning from you. Yeah. But just as somebody that is on Canva every day and that is coming up with new designs, mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about as far as the transparent logo. Right. You have just too much clear. going on. Right. And because and you want to be able to, to put it everywhere. Because mm -hmm. what I'm thinking about is that you can put boss me like just the text you can put that on a shirt. You can put exactly. that on a hat because it's easily, it translates. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just a plain, clear background. If I want to put it on a sticker and put the sticker on a pink, yellow, blue, black, wherever I want to put it, it's going to look right. Because right. it's a transparent background, you know? Yeah. And, you know, that, that makes me think about the saying, less is more. Exactly. Yeah. Less is definitely more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So... I appreciate you. I mean, like 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 you said, you know, for the rest of the tips, y'all gonna have to pay her for that. <laughs> but in the meantime, we thank you for sharing the difference between a good logo and a bad logo because it's, it's important. Yeah, it is important. Your logo is the first thing people really see when they tap into your business. So you want it to be eye catching and not clutter and doing too much. Right, right, yeah. right. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I mean, you know. <laughs> And just to let y'all know who show this is. Zoolander, no one above. Cause I'm on the mic with Jordy Love. Zoolander, <laughs> no one above. Cause I'm on the mic with Jordy Love. I wrote that. All right.